In this video, we're going to talk about how we use exponential equations in everyday real-world problems, and uh, we're going to be looking at some applications. Now, in the past, when we were dealing with investing money and we had continuous compounding, we would use this formula, A is equal to P times E raised to the RT. Now, we're going to transition into this, this other equation. It's pretty much the same thing as this, but it's useful because it can be used in more than just you know investing problems and so we're going to see this equation that y is equal to y not e to the kt so everything lines up here just the way you would expect it to e is still the oil you know Euler's constant e instead of saying r for our rate we're going to use k and t is still going to be measuring time now here's the thing with these exponential equations and the applications that we have, t is not always going to be measured in years. Some of the situations that we run across, we're talking about time being measured in, say, minutes or hours because of how certain populations or certain uh, scenarios are growing or decaying. And that's the really the, the big thing about these application problems is that we're all talking about um, either a situation where we have growth or where we have decay. And the difference between these is that when you're talking about growth, that means that you have a k value that's not greater than zero. No, yeah, that's what I mean, greater than zero. What am I thinking about? I don't, know, I don't know where I am today. And if you have decay, that's going to be a k value that is less than zero. So we didn't really see negative rates when we were talking about investing, because that seems kind of ridiculous. Why would you invest money but be losing it? Uh, but here, we're talking about decay. So we're talking about having a particular amount of something, and as time goes along, that amount is decreasing uh, with this exponential behavior. P before meant our principal, or the initial amount, whatever we, whatever we invested. And so we're going to represent that with Y naught. Now, here's the thing. This is a subscript of zero, and in most math and science classes, when you have a variable with a subscript of zero, that just means your initial condition, your initial state, your initial value, right? And of course, y is just going to be that, that final amount. And we can actually turn this into, um, or turn it into a function. It is exponential, but we're not really going to worry about that uh, too much right now. So let me show you how we can use this little guy right here for all kinds of fun problems. So let's look at this. Suppose you have a population of a city that is growing exponentially. Okay. So let's see this. In five years, Excuse me, even I can't spell today. All right. So in five years, in five years, the population of a city grows from. 22,000 residents to 30,000 residents okay and what we're going to do here is that we're going to make this assumption we're going to assume assume exponential growth and Here's the thing about that. In a lot of real world situations, population grows exponentially. It's not a, a linear growth. Most of the time, if you were to, to map out uh, the, the growth patterns of, of towns or of countries, you're going to see this very slow increase that's going to be exponential. It's not linear, but it has that upward slope to it. Now, of course, this we're just talking about models, and the data cannot fit exactly with something that's exponential. You never know what kinds of tragedies, what kinds of big world events are going to happen that are going to affect that. I mean, just look at what the Black Plague did to Europe. You know, you've got this upward swing, and then all of a sudden, you lose a significant portion of that population. So population models can only work you know, so far. And of course, if you're talking about the population of a city, that doesn't include what's going to happen if a natural disaster hits and a lot of people move out or a lot of people move in because of 
uh, a natural disaster where they were living. And now that's flooding your particular area with uh, new residents. So again, we're just going to assume that this is representing something that is exponential. So when we have a question like this and we know that it's exponential, the first thing that we need to do is write that formula. Y is equal to Y not E to the K T. So we've got, a, we've got four different things here. You've got the beginning value, the ending value, the rate, and the time. So plug in everything that you know to find the thing that you don't know. Because see, here's the thing. Right here at the very beginning, we could say this. We could say that the population is going to be based off of an initial value of 22,000 people times e to the... Now, this is where we have problems. We don't know what k is. We don't know what this rate is. If we can find k, then we could answer a bunch of other questions about this. We could answer questions like, what's the population going to be in 10 years, or 12 years, or 100 years, as long as things follow this particular pattern? We don't know the k. And we're going to, and t is going to be our variable. So it's going to be 22,000e something t. So if we were trying to turn this into, you know, into some kind of function based off of time, this is what it would look like. And it's going to be our job, job number one, is to find that k, find the rate that ties everything together. You might be going, well, how can I do that? Well, they gave us some information here at the very beginning that's super useful. They told us, the initial value, they told us why not. They told us the ending value, which is y, and they told us this happens after a t value of 5. So taking these three pieces of information, we can throw them into this formula and come up with what the rate is. And that k, that rate of growth, can be used for everything else in this problem. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I know that I'm ending with 30,000 after starting with 22,000 e now I don't know what k is so I'm going to write k and t is going to be in 5 years All right. now your job here is to solve for k now we just saw examples in the last section or two about how do we get the variable from the power out in front where we can actually work with it and we do that by taking the log of both sides, either the common log or the natural log. Now, since our base here is e, it only makes sense for us to use the natural log. But before I do that, I've got to get rid of this 22,000. So, my first step is to divide both sides of the equation by 22,000. Now, I'm not really big into simplifying right now because I know that at the end, it's all going to be a matter of me typing things into my calculator correctly. But I will do this, because I don't want to write a bunch of stuff over and over. You can reduce away those three factors of 10, which keeps us from writing so many zeros, right? So we get 30 over 22, and I know you're saying, why don't you reduce that? I, I don't need to reduce it any further. I just want to make the number smaller so I had less to write. But you can reduce it if you want to. And this is e to the 5 times k. So now we want to take the log of both sides because that's going to bring the power out in front. So let's do that. I'm going to take the natural log here and the natural log here, and let's see what we get. All right, so this is the natural log of the fraction, 30 over 22. When I take the natural log of e, those guys kind of reduce away, and you're going to be left with just the power, which is 5 K. Now you could say this is 5k times natural log of e, but again that's going to be 5k times 1, or just 5k. And again, your job here is to solve for k. So I'm going to take each side and divide it by 5. Now you may run into questions like this in my math lab where they want an exact value for your k. In which case you would take this, make sure you reduce the fraction on the inside, and you would type in that entire expression. So that's exact. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and round this. But here's a little trick that I might want to show you guys. So on your graphing calculator, we're going to type this in. So we have the natural log of 30 divided by 22. Make sure you close the parentheses for the natural log. 
and you're going to divide this by 5. Now I get some crazy looking decimal, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and write out what this is. So this is k is approximately uh, 0 0.0. 0, 6, 2. Okay. Now, this is me rounding. So to avoid any kind of rounding errors, because I really only want you to round one time and that's at the end, let's take this and let's press that store key and let's store that into x. So we're going to remember that that's what x is going to equal. So I can use this guy later on for the rest of this problem. All right. So we've got this. And that's the first part of this question is to find that rate to find k. Okay, so we have this, which means that I can now come back up here and fill this in. So our k is 0 0.062. And what this does is that this creates a formula for us to, for us to use for the rest of for the rest of this scenario. So if there are other questions we need to answer, you know, we can easily do that. Okay, so for the question that we have, if you look in your notes, we want to write an equation to model the size of the town where t is the number of years since you had 22,000. And that's going to be this guy right here. This is the equation that models what happens in that town. So y is equal to 22,000 e raised to the 0 0.062 times t. The next part says, what's going to be the population in 12 years? Well, let's look at it. Let's write this out. So what is the population? What is the population in 12 years? Well, quite simply, that just means this. It's asking the question, when t equals 12, what's the population? Well, that's why we've got the formula here. And I said, once you build that equation, you can use that for everything else that we need to answer for this question. So that means that the population y is going to be 22,000 e raised to the 0 0.062 and our t value is now 12. And so again, this is where we have to go to the calculator to come up with an answer because I'm not doing this by hand. Now watch how I use that k value from before. I've got 22,000. Second natural log is going to bring up e in the power. Instead of me writing this decimal, which I can do, I'm going to write x because x is what, uh, what we stored this crazy decimal into. So it's going to have all that information for us. So x times 12. And we come up with this number. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about population, right? So if I ask you what's the population, you're not going to tell me that it's something 0.6, right? Typically, we just round to the nearest um, whole number. Uh, make sure you read the questions in my math lab correctly, because sometimes they say round uh, values to the nearest thousand. Um, so in this case, if it, was, if it were to the nearest 1,000, you'd say 46, uh, 46,000. So here we're going to say this is 46,313. Uh, that's how many people that we can expect to be living in this town 12 years from the time that it had 22,000 people. Is it going to be 100% accurate? No, but it should give us something that's in, this, in, a, in the same ballpark, right? Something that makes sense. And for the last part of this problem, we want to know when will the population be 100,000? Okay, so when will there be 100,000 people? All right, so this is the reason why we found k. So that we could find the equation so we can answer everything else. So in the last part of this problem, I gave you the t, so we fill it in t, and that just instantly gave you what y was. But now we need to find the t when we have 100,000. And so it's very much the same way that we found k. 
we go back to this guy right here, and the y value is going to be 100,000 equals 22,000 e to the 0.062t. And we just go through that process of solving this guy for t, which means we're going to divide both sides by 22,000. So divide by 22,000. We're going to simplify and we get 100 over 22 equals e to the 0.062t. And just like over here, we applied natural log to both sides. We're going to do the same thing here. So do the natural log of this and the natural log of that. I'm not going to work that out yet. Don't go to a decimal until the very, very end. So the natural log of 100 over 22 is equal to 0.062t which means when we solve t by dividing by this coefficient, t is equal to the natural log of 100 over 22, all divided by 0 0.062, which was our k value. All right, and we're gonna to go to the calculator to see what exactly we get from this. So the natural log of 100 divided by 22 and divided by, now I could just type in this decimal, but again, we have all of that information stored into x, so I'm gonna do x, and we come up with, you know, before we do the answer, I want us to think about, think about this. It took us five years to go from 22,000 to 30,000. It took 12 years to get up to 46,000. That's not even halfway to 100,000. So I expect the value to be something that's at least 25, maybe 30. I could be wrong, but let's see what we get. 24.4. You've got that exponential growth going on, so it only makes sense that it, you know, shouldn't take you too long to get up to that 100,000. So this value is approximately equal to 24.4 years. Make sure that you do use appropriate units here. So just want to make sure we understand that in this problem, the key part was finding the k value. Because once I found the k, I had this equation, and I could use that to answer every other question in this scenario. So you're gonna see that in a lot of the problems going forward, that once you find k, you can find anything else. So let's see what happens in the next video.